In this video, I'm going to make a fantastic, versatile, whole grain abundance bowl with a pumpkin seed power sauce. Even though I really enjoy making fancy and kind of complicated dishes once in a while, I'd like to show you my go-to everyday staple for healthy, delicious cooking. It's super fast and easy. It's called the Whole Grain Abundance Bowl. I'll tell you about the ingredients before we get started. So this is brown rice. This is a long grain brown rice. And these are green lentils. Um, for this recipe, what I like to do is combine these two things because actually you can cook them in the same pot together instead of cooking them in two separate pots and then combining them. This is what makes the Whole Grain Abundance Bowl so awesome and versatile and just really easy. Then once we've cooked this, we're actually gonna use the steam from the lentils and rice to steam our sweet potato and broccoli. So again, this is all going in the same pot. It takes 45 minutes start to finish and you have a really fantastic, very well balanced meal in under an hour, which rocks. So the first thing I'm going to do is wash the rice and lentils in the second week video, I showed you that soaking grains and lentils is really important before you start cooking. But today I'd like to show you, in case you haven't soaked them, how to cook them from dried. It's really simple, and if you're pressed for time, this is the best way to do it. So I'm actually gonna combine both the brown rice and the lentils, and I usually do a ratio of two parts rice to one part lentil. Combine those in the same pot, and I'm going to go over to the sink to wash them. The first thing I'm going to do is give the rice and lentils a really good rinse. So I'm actually filling the pot with water and then swirling everything around together. And I also just like to sort of rub everything against each other. This is gonna remove a lot of the excess starch and any other impurities that are on the surfaces. There we go. So as I pour out, you can probably see that the color of the water, it's a little bit murky. So I'm actually gonna keep repeating this process until that water is relatively clear. This takes about two to three times. So pour that back in and repeat. It's pretty amazing actually how much dirt can come off some grains and legumes. You'll notice um, depending on where you buy them and also depending on the variety. Some of them are really, really coated and that's totally fine, but that's why it's really important to wash them. Okay, so it's looking better already. Okay, I'll just do it one more time. we go and this time doesn't need to be as long because the water is actually pretty clean now great so again if you wanted to soak the grains overnight you could definitely do that and what that's going to do is improve the digestibility of both the rice and the lentils but if you're pressed for time or at the last minute you just have to have an abundance bowl you can totally do this as well there we go so that's gonna go back into the pot then I'm going to add some water for cooking. So I have about three cups total uh, ingredients in here. So I'm actually gonna add about four cups of liquid. There we go. That looks good. And I'm gonna go over to the stove. All right. So the grains have been washed, the lentils as well, and they're in the same pot with their water. I'm gonna turn on the stove. At this point, I'm going to add a little bit of salt, about a teaspoon. It's just important to season these before they're cooked because while they're cooking, they tend to absorb a lot of that nice flavor. It's really delicious. So that's pretty much it. If you remember from week two, my rule, don't stir the pot, don't touch it, just leave it. Put your timer on for about 
30 minutes, depending on what kind of grain you're cooking. Um, again, things like quinoa and millet have a much shorter cook time, so just make sure you're aware of how long your grain takes approximately. But what we're going to do while this is cooking is actually prepare the sweet potato and the broccoli. And as this is steaming, those are going to go on top. We need to get this to a point where it's almost cooked at about the 35 minute mark. Then we can add these vegetables. If we were to add them now, these would be totally overcooked. Um, and these would be obviously fine, but we don't want overcooked veggies. So we're going to give it some time to do its thing in the pot. So we're going to head over to the cutting board and prepare vegetables. All right, so we're boiling our rice and lentils and I'm gonna get started on the vegetables. Today we're gonna to be using a sweet potato and broccoli. You can use any vegetables you like, but just make sure that they have a similar steaming time or what you can do is actually add one that's a bit longer to the pot first and one's a bit shorter to the top second to the pot, not the top, also the top. Okay, here we go. <laughs> so I'm gonna cut these into relatively bite-sized chunks, much as possible. Sort of like this size. That looks good. In fact, maybe I'll cut that in half again. That's good. And these ones can also go in half. Beautiful. Now, if you're serving this to more than one person, if this is for friends or a family member or something, um, again, adjust your level of veggie to suit that accordingly. But I'm just gonna do this much for today since it's just little old me. There we go. This is also a really nice thing to make double of for leftovers because even the steamed vegetable will save really, really well in the fridge. So broccoli, we all need to eat more of this. This is a really good way of doing it. So I'm just gonna pick off some florets. That's about it. And there we go. I'll do one more since it's so good for me. All right, that looks about good. I'm happy with that. So I'm actually gonna just put this into, I'll start with the broccoli. I'm actually gonna put the broccoli on top of the sweet potato because the sweet potato, if it's closer to the rice and lentils, it's a little, um, well, it's more firm than the broccoli, of course. So if it's closer to the rice and lentils, it's closer to the source of the heat and therefore will cook pretty evenly with the broccoli. There we go, perfect. So. The other couple things I'm going to do while this is cooking up, I'm quickly gonna make a really nice, fresh and raw, kind of um, almost like a coleslaw, but really, really simple. So I have my uh, red cabbage here. I'm just gonna take the mandolin and shave it into this bowl. You can use a knife for this, of course, but the mandolin's really handy because it goes so fast. That's a good amount. Again, it's just me. Okay, so if you remember from week two, I use the technique of massaging. And what this does is it helps break down the cellulose or the bone structure of the plant. And that makes it really soft and yummy and sort of pliable in the mouth. So a little bit of salt. What the salt's going to do is pull a lot of that water out of the cabbage, um, which is also gonna help sort of release the tension in it, which is what we're looking for. A little bit of olive oil about a teaspoon and then some lime juice. You can also use lemon for this, but I kind of like the flavor of the lime with the rest of these ingredients. All right. Mm, this is gonna be so delicious. Okay, so that's it. I'm just gonna, with one hand, you'll see the volume change really quickly. And I'm just scrunching it all together. The color will also change as well. If you want this to be a little sweeter, you can add a touch of honey or maple syrup. That's a really nice addition. This is also something that you can keep in the fridge for two to three days if you'd like. This is really nice actually in a sandwich, just this by itself. If you have like a hummus wrap or something you wanna make, this adds a nice little crunch. Yeah, that's perfect. That's what we're looking for. So I'll just give it a taste. Mmm, that's so yummy. Okay, so I'll set that aside. I'm gonna quickly go wash my hand and then we're gonna make some sauce. 
So the rice and lentils are boiling as you can see. So I'm going to turn it down to a simmer. That's gonna be the lowest flame and looking really good. There we go. Now I'm gonna start with our pumpkin seed power sauce. This is so delicious. A really good thing to have on hand at all times. So I will start with some pumpkin seeds. I've already toasted these. You can do this raw, of course, and that would mean soaking the pumpkin seeds for four to eight hours with a little bit of salt. But I really like the flavor of this sauce when the pumpkin seeds have been toasted. So this is one cup of seeds. Put that in the blender. We need a couple glugs of olive oil, about three tablespoons. There we go. The next ingredient is garlic. This is a fantastic sauce to make during cold and flu season because we have lots of garlic here, three cloves in fact, and this is really gonna help fight any kind of virus or bacteria that you're exposed to. We have a little apple cider vinegar, and this is the acidity in the recipe, and that's really gonna keep things nice and bright and light. So that goes in. Maple syrup, again, because we have the salt, we have the acid, we need a little bit of sweetness, so I'm going to use maple syrup for that. There we go. And to spice things up, I'm gonna use a little cayenne pepper. This is totally optional, but it adds a really nice depth of flavor and a nice little kick as well. If you're cooking this for children, you, could, you can of course leave it out, but it's a nice addition. Um, next, I'm gonna put in a little bit of ginger. I've already peeled this and just gonna give it a rough chop to help the blender out a little bit. There we go, okay. Great. And some lemon juice. You could also use lime juice for this if you'd like, but I'll use lemon today. So you can put in as much as you'd like. I just like a lot, about half a lemon. There we go. Okay, next um, I'm gonna add water. So this is three quarters of a cup of water, but I sort of start with a half a cup just to see how things blend up, just in case. So here we go. looking pretty thick, so I'll probably add some water. Oh my gosh. I always forget how good this stuff is. It's amazing. I also forgot a little pepper. It's not 100% necessary, but it's a nice addition. Okay, but we do need some more water. I think I'll just add all of it, but it's amazing how smooth and creamy this will get. It's really great. So this is looking great. I'm just gonna go grab a spatula to scrape down the sides. And a spoon for tasting. Here we go. This sauce actually keeps pretty well in the fridge, uh, especially if you use the toasted nuts versus the uh, soaked ones. And you're looking at maybe five or six days. And I actually like making a double batch and that way I have it for all kinds of things. So this actually doubles as salad dressing. Um, it's really nice folded into like whole grains or topped on roasted vegetables. Delish. Oh my gosh. Woo! It's serious power sauce. So that's finished. I'm just gonna keep uh, cooking my rice and lentils. And when we reach the 35 minute mark on cooking, I'm going to add my lovely broccoli and sweet potato, and then we'll be pretty much finished. So I think we're almost there. The, let's just check the pot. Yeah, you can see the lentils and the rice have really expanded because they're absorbing all that water and cooking. And if you remember my trick from the cooking grains video about the not stirring the pot, I'll just show you again. So you insert your fork into the bottom and just rock it back and forth. And 
then you can see how much water is left. What we're looking for right now is probably, I don't know, I'd say an inch to an inch and a half of water in the bottom. Um, if you need a little more, which I think I might, I'm gonna give a little more water because we need some more to actually steam the vegetables. So that's good. Next step is adding our vegetables. So again, I chose sweet potato and broccoli today, but you can really pick whatever you like. Carrots are really nice, beets are great. And I'm just gonna place them around here. This pot's actually quite small, so I'm not gonna put in too, too much. I'll just do a, a very small layer of the sweet potato. There we go. And then I wanna make sure we have lots of broccoli. There we go. So I'm putting the sweet potato in first again because it needs uh, most of the contact with the heat because it um, doesn't, uh, it's firmer, it takes longer to cook. There we go, okay. So isn't this cool? We're using everything, this pot for every single thing and we have the whole thing just cooking away. One pot wonder, there we go. Put that on and this needs to steam for I don't know, 10 minutes or so, just until the sweet potatoes are nice and tender and the broccolis as well. So the sweet potatoes and broccoli are tender and the rice and lentils are perfectly cooked. I'm gonna take them off the stove. Here we go. Ta-da! How nice. So you'll know that the sweet potatoes cooked. If you just take a fork and pierce it, it should be nice and tender and it's absolutely perfect right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and scoop the vegetables off. Put them in my bowl here. I just love the ease of this. It's so nice to do everything in one pot and not cook things separately. It makes life so easy. And again, this is uh, really perfect to make ahead of time and make delicious leftovers. So put the veggies over here. And I've actually cooked more lentils and rice than I would normally cook for myself in one serving but I did that on purpose, just so that I have extras for tomorrow and the next day. Makes a really nice lunch. Even when you serve the rice and lentils cold, still good. Okay, so those are all our vegetables and now I'm just gonna get a nice scoop of the lentils and rice. Oh, this is gonna be delicious. And again, you can mix and match any grains and lentils that you like. Just make sure they have similar cooking times. That's really important. Mmm, yum. And you also don't need to eat this hot. It's also a very good dish cold too. So if you want to make this ahead of time, put it in a lunchbox, take to the office or school or the gym or something. Also fantastic. The next thing I'm going to do is just chop up some of this cilantro. Sometimes I like to use the stems, but these ones are a bit thick, so I'll just chop them off there. Again, cilantro is really great because it contains antioxidants and it's also really detoxifying. There we go. And I have my really nice little raw cabbage salad here. And I actually added a little bit of maple syrup while the lentils were cooking. Mm. There it is. Just needed a little sweetness to balance out the lime juice. Our sauce is totally done. So I'm going to pour it into this jar here. Beautiful. Power sauce. Love it. So we're almost there. Just gonna finish assembling. I'm gonna put this nice raw cabbage in here. This is also so nice just like the crunchiness of this. And again, when you eat raw food, you're consuming the enzymes and enzymes help us with digestion. So this is a really nice little addition to put on here. And again, you could do the massaged kale if you like. You could even do this whole thing with the raw rice or the uh, grain-free rice that we had in week two. Um, yeah, in case you didn't wanna do the cooked grains. So, let me just get some of the sauce here. Oh, that's silly. Let's just pour it on, shall we? Oh yeah, nice. And then a really good topping of the cilantro. Beautiful, yum. I can't wait to dig into this. It's gonna be so yummy. 
It's so filling and satisfying. It's almost like eating a hug. This is, this is self-love, everybody. So I hope you have found some inspiration to make your own abundance bowl and just enjoy the abundance.